Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, July 1st, 2022. Fire potential impacts for the next few days are shown here. Uh, some of the main impacts we have are expecting some dry, gusty winds today over far western Nevada and portions of southern and uh, southern Utah and southern Nevada. Those winds really pick up on Saturday and Sunday, especially over eastern Nevada and western Utah ahead of a cold front moving into the Pacific Northwest. And we do have some isolated thunderstorms continue to be expected over central and eastern Utah today and then along this strip here um, across the Utah and Idaho border. Some mountain isolated storms expected in Idaho tomorrow and then a little bit further north on Sunday with the thunderstorms decreasing over Utah over the next few days. Yesterday we had quite a few storms in Utah, especially over central and eastern Utah, and many of these storms were accompanied by a wetting rain. Uh, we do have a few pockets of green out here, which was actually around an inch, so some heavy downpours with some of these storms. Recent fire activity is shown here. We did have quite a bit of IA yesterday with uh, all that lightning activity, but it appears that most of these fires remain small. Precipitation for the past 14 days shows above normal precip has occurred over the higher elevations of central and eastern Utah, particularly over the south and east, uh, with a drier pattern over Nevada and Idaho. ERCs are shown here for a few areas in Utah, the central Utah and then the Arizona Strip. Uh, in central Utah, those values are hovering right around normal. For the time of year, we do expect those to probably increase over the next week or so with a dry air mask moving in. Um, and over the Arizona Strip and far southern Utah, those values are below normal for the time of year. Uh, but again, we should see them start to increase somewhat as we go into a drier period. This morning satellite imagery shows a little bit of moisture still lingering over Utah and then along this uh, Utah-Idaho border and into uh, uh, southeast Idaho and western Wyoming today for some isolated storms continuing today um, dry over Nevada. So the big overall pattern for today and really for the next week is going to be this uh, low pressure system to our north and west with high pressure uh, to the east. So for today, high pressure over uh, southeast Utah, keeping temperatures quite warm over most of the area and some breezy winds in place over western Nevada. No high risk issued for today. Uh, winds for this afternoon, we have a few areas with gusty winds, especially over far western Nevada and then over southern Nevada and southwest Utah, but below criteria for any high risk or red flags. Uh, precip for this afternoon is going to be more, definitely more limited than what we've seen the last couple of days in Utah with just some isolated thunderstorms and then again up there in southeast Idaho and western Wyoming. On Saturday, that low moves a little bit further south and closer to uh, closer to the shore here uh, that will increase wind speeds across the Great Basin um, and we do have high risk issued for eastern Nevada and much of western Utah as the wind speeds pick up and relative humidities are quite low. So closer look here at where the strongest winds are going to be on Saturday. Again this is eastern Nevada and western Utah where relative humidities are around 10 percent or so for really all of, of Nevada and western Utah. Um, so we are moving into a drier pattern. More of the same is expected on Tuesday as that low remains the dominant feature up there in the Pacific Northwest, uh, keeping uh, increased wind speeds in place over the central Great Basin and high risk triggers issued once again. On Sunday, um, closer look at those winds pick up even a little bit more increasing on Sunday, those wind speeds up to 40, 45 miles an hour across the Utah's west deserts. Um, we do see some cooler air start to move into far western Nevada as that low moves a little bit closer. Um, so highs in the low 80s over western Nevada, but still very warm, near 100 degrees uh, in those valleys in the, in the east. Three-day precip totals are shown here. Not really expecting much. We do go into a drier pattern for Utah. Um, some of these thunderstorms are what we'll see lingering today um, in Wyoming and northern Utah. Uh, but there is some moisture moving into the Pacific Northwest uh, with that next low. On Monday, the pattern still really remains similar with that low uh, dominating the picture over the Pacific Northwest, keeping a dry, warm pattern, warm flow in much of the Great Basin, especially the east, where, where the west will, will still be a little bit cooler. No high risk triggers have been issued um, as the winds do die down a bit early into next week. 
pattern remains the same on Tuesday with dry southwest flow in place across much of the area, uh, warm temperatures region wide. And on Wednesday, more of the same. Here's our broken record portion of the forecast warm, dry, some um, occasional breezy southwest winds into midweek next week. And on Thursday, we start to see the high pressure strengthening and moving a little bit back toward uh, the Great Basin. We could possibly see a little bit of moisture, um, southerly moisture moving back into Utah. We'll just have to watch and see that. Um, but the low still remaining dominant in the Pacific Northwest, some breezy winds continuing over Idaho and Northwest Nevada. The seven day forecast or the seven day precip totals uh, reflect what we're expecting in the three day precip totals uh, because after after the, today's precip, we really are going into a drier pattern for the next week. Um, so we, we will see our fire danger increasing once again in Utah um, from the kind of low values right now. The extended forecast for the, heading into the middle of July, the second week of July, it's calling for above normal temperatures everywhere, um, with the hottest temperatures there over the south central U.S. and below normal precip expected over the Great Basin. The monsoons, uh, because of the placement of the high pressure, they're not able to really um, be in full force across the southwest or up into the Great Basin or even Colorado. So we will just have to um, watch this guy, but it looks like we're taking a break from the monsoon for a week or so. This concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.